and once your image have been just saved we can desaturate the elements and we can crash the white tones to create a mask for our interior orange tint and right now I will go back to my main comp and I will choose again the calculations to create a new mask and bam that's the mask it's not very accurate but will feather out a bit this effect so don't worry and uh, now we can select all the interiors we need but first I will choose these three layers merge down the layers pressing ctrl E and right now I will change the colors on more and more orange and I will maybe even increase a bit the contrast using levels and right now we can create a mask over with black color and choosing the new channel we can paint with a white color with a very soft brush to add some more colors to our interiors now well, that's looking pretty okay and we can leave this layer for a second above other layers because I feel we need to add a bit more color correction to the whole image so maybe let's add more red color and in the next step a lot of more blue now let's desaturate these blues so like this and uh, now I will add to this orange a mask and let's paint a bit just over this right area and it's just a feeling, you know, there is an, uh, no uh, no rule actually. I'm just painting in the way I feel the image should look like. And basically it's very easy if you have from the beginning the idea about your image. It's a bit harder when uh, the image is not looking good and then you need to some way save it. But... Uh, it's really a lot of fun even though it's taking a lot of time sometimes but still really cool so the base steps have been just done and now we need to add a few more corrections so we have very dark areas on our trees and I like to change also on my graphs and to do this I will duplicate the layer once again I will choose levels and you can make it brighter another mask and once again with a very soft brush we can paint a bit over the trees and you know don't worry if you're not very accurate this will be almost not visible and here we have a very dark grass and also here so I will go back to my first image move it to the top and right here I can see the grass is looking a bit better I will add even more contrast just a little bit and now another mask and let's paint again but this time over the grass That's how we save the images. And I will maybe choose the lasso tool, polygonal lasso, to select this area a bit further. And now it's looking a lot better. So the next step we can do is to add some more contrast and colors to the sky 
and to do this I will duplicate my sky layer I will drag it on the top and uh, you can see we have already some corrections so we can do a different thing we can del delete it merge the new layers into a new one layer just duplicate just in case if you want to go back quickly to the old layer select the sky and we can simply copy the sky and now we can switch the colors so you know don't be afraid to go into the extremes sometimes I will crash the black tones to make it look very dark maybe to saturate this a bit not sure about the colors yet maybe something like this and now I will add a mask and of course I will paint just in some areas and right now I will add some vignetting maybe so I'll paint just with black color pretty simple you can use also the lens filter there's a vignette option so you can add it automatically and uh, in the next step I'd like to add some more orange tint here in the foreground because we have here a street lamp and probably the light will be similar with the temperature to the lights inside so let's also do it a bit more orange that's all like this and uh, right now I will also add some exposure control and I will change the offset with gamma correction and once again let's add a mask and let's paint over the elements we want to correct and it's good to have a pretty huge display to play with those colors and layers because right here we have not much room and it's very very difficult to decide what's looking good what's looking not good because you know you can take a very far perspective to watch on the to watch the image and then you can decide what areas need to be improved i see here we have two more too much dark blue areas and also maybe on the street too much so we will sorry change it in a few seconds I will add maybe a bit more blue the exposure control is increasing the saturation so you may want to in the end maybe saturate the element that has been uh, changed with the filter exposure actually it's not a filter it's adjustment tool in CS5 it's just here right under the mode image adjustments so it's a bit different now I feel we have here too much red but I will take care of it in a few seconds so I will duplicate the merge layer again I will add more blue maybe a bit green color and right now I will just paint on those areas where I feel it's correct so maybe here in the middle it should be more blue and uh, I will select only the building and also a bit here and uh, we can also take care of the lights a bit of our cars because I didn't put any real light inside of it so in the raw rendering we have just a dark area and we can adjust these elements also so we can copy the light we can increase with for instance with levels or curves this element and now we can add a motion blur effect maybe not so strong so like this and another mask or we can select this element press shift f6 
and we can feather out this new layer and we can of course do the same thing to the next car I will this time just use the dodge tool and I will set to so we have here a dodge tool and I will select the highlights or maybe my shadows better Okay, that's looking a bit better. And right now we need to add some glow effects on our garden lamps. So to do this I will once again duplicate the layer. And you can see even we don't have a clean rendering right here because of the AA filter. And you can fix it with uh, clamping the output as sub-pixel mapping. Or you can just right here in Photoshop use the stamp tool, for example, and you know fix some areas just to make it less visible. And in the end, we can add some more blur. And we just pick the right spot from the similar shade area and it's looking pretty okay so let's leave the black dots and let's focus on our lamps and we need to have a bit more light and uh, as in the previous scene in the original file we have a glow with some stripes and it's looking much much more orange so once again we'll add some orange we'll add curves just to make it look more we have here more light and that's looking a bit better I will, I will add another mask I will paint with a very soft brush over this orange layer so now we can see we have a nice light distribution we can also do it right here just the orange and uh, in the next stage we might want to add even more glow and to do this I will copy the layer, merge the layer I will choose the selection tool as it's an ellipse and uh, I will basically feather out some areas like maybe 25 pixels right here and we can increase the curves once again the intensity of our light and uh, the next thing we need to do is to add some stripes so it's kinda uh, star filter or star fan or a poly spike something like this and to do this we can use just pressing E this color so it's a bit orange uh, maybe. maybe manual will be easier to find the right color and we will choose a line let's set it to one pixel only now we will uh, rasterize the line so, so like this and that's the base idea for our stripe I, I will just erase the ends to make them more smooth and right now I will select the line I will modify the selection so select modify expand I will set it to 25 pixels and I will set the feather pressing shift F6 to 15 now we can create a new layer and pressing alt delete fill the new layer Go on the top of this, and we have a nice stripe. Maybe I will change the mode to screen, and I will erase a bit here on the edge with the soft. And we can even 
leave the stripe alone. Let's duplicate the layer once again so we have a better glow. Now we can scale down just to have a glow spot here in the middle. And we can once again copy this layer, you know, rotate it. And that's how we do the fan. That's a very simple technique, but still it's getting some cool details to the scene and uh, in some cases it's worth to spend a few times some time on it of course there are plugins which may make this process much more easier and uh, why not if you find a good one then let me know and right now we could just fix the sewer on the foreground because it's still too bright so we can choose ellipse tool to select the sewer. Now Ctrl C, Ctrl V to paste. Ctrl M for the curves. So we can do it much, much darker. And Ctrl U to desaturate this element. We may fix a bit the border because now it's so black. It's okay, it's black here on the front, but this edge on the top is not looking correct, so I will just erase it very carefully with a small erase tool. And let's lower a bit the opacity to, so it's not so strong in the image. And uh, we are basically done with the first step. We may also want to add some light trails. And to do this, we can add a new layer with a new pattern. And I will show you this right now. We have here a light trail. I have created uh, inside of After Effects, actually, during my particle systems practice and we can now copy this strange looking trail and paste into our image I will scale it up because it's low resolution but you don't need to worry about this and I will drag it just to the top and pressing Ctrl T and uh, keeping the Ctrl pressed we can kind of skew also with free transform tool our new layer and as you can see it's kind of wiggled so it's not fitting the composition because we have a perfectly straight road but still the idea is not so bad so I will show you how to do it and I will set the mode to screen at first and I will increase the luminance using the levels and uh, now it's looking pretty bad because we have here a lot of dots so we will choose the filter and we will choose blur and le not lens blur of course we want to have motion blur so filter blur motion blur and now we can increase this blur a lot actually so it's looking almost straight and it's a good way to simulate the light trails on your road. Now we can add a mask maybe and uh, mask the edges or feather out the edges so it's not so present in the scene so strong. And now we can duplicate this even twice, change the colors a bit, you know, to, for example more yellow using the hue saturation also. And uh, in the end we have some filters that may retouch your image. And I will use now the artistic film grain to add some grain and even glow to the image. 
so I will now once again cover with black color the whole image and I will add this gray maybe here on the edges right there and we can add some chromatic aberration in the background and to do this we will choose this dot lens correction and we have here chromatic aberration I will choose to edge extend I should crop the image before I have added this filter because now we have this outlines on the edges still it's not a problem because I will add it with a mask only on elements I want to have this aberration of course not on the whole image just few distortions maybe right here and back to blend it better with our sky and maybe on the light trail somewhere here okay and uh, right now actually we are done with this image and let's have a quick look on the first shot so I duplicate and on the final result so the first image was not re really interesting at all and right here we have some strong elements like a very strong uh, sky and few other street elements with motion blur and you know this, this is giving us uh, a lot of colors which may attract us or distract from the building because in this case this building is very huge and uh, it's, it's, it has also a repeating pattern so in many cases people say yeah, it's not interesting at all and you know it's your task to make it look more interesting and if your model so the, basically the subject has a lot of cool elements you want to sell in a scene then you don't need to add any additional elements but uh, you know if you want to add some distractions and it's your intention just to make uh, the image more looking more maybe not natural you know more interesting than that's the good way and you can also think about the framing which was uh, covered in our composition lecture so we can use the vignette also as a framing tool and I see you in the next section where I will show you the post work on streets of Bordeaux which is pretty much also an urban scene but we had few other elements we might cover so I see you in a few seconds